Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. My name is Sasha and today we are going to build a Wi-Fi enabled dry box for 3D printing filament. By the end of this video we will have a dry box that we can monitor and control remotely from anywhere in the world and also expose a web API so that it can interact with other systems like Octoprint, Automation or anything else. In this video, our primary focus will be on building the universal controller or the brains of the dry box in a way that allows us to use it with many different combinations of heaters, fans, sensors, desiccants and so on. Getting the plastic box for the dry box is fairly trivial and different people will have different needs depending on the spool size, number of spools, location of the dry box and so on. So we won't focus on that too much. Let's get started. Okay, so we are building a heated dry box, primarily for 3D printing filament, but you could use it for other applications as well. As the name of the heated dry box implies, we are going to have a heating element inside the box. This will allow us to heat up the insides of the dry box to either keep the filament at the desired temperature, for example if you store filament in a cold environment, or to help us with drying or baking the filament by raising the temperature within the box. The heater will very quickly heat up the air that is in contact with it or the filament that is in close proximity. But the air or the filament that is further away will take time to heat up or in worst case will always be much colder than the one that is right next to the heater. Obviously we don't want that, we want the air and the filament temperature within the dry box to be as constant as possible. To help with this, we will add a fan inside the dry box. This should force air circulation and ideally should pull the hot air away from the heater and push the cold air towards the heater. Now that we have some air circulation within the box, we can easily add a desiccant anywhere in the box and that should help absorb the moisture as the air circulates within the box. Okay, so this makes sense but there are obviously few components missing. The heater cannot be always on without any regulation because it can get too hot and melt our filament or catch fire. The fan doesn't need to be always on and at full speed because that might be too noisy or annoying and we also need a way to interact and control the dry box and so on. So as I said, we will design our own dry box controller. For the brains of our controller I have selected the ESP32. Primarily because it has built-in Wi-Fi capabilities, anyone should be able to get one and it's relatively easy to use. Because what's the point of open source, open hardware project if nobody can replicate it? With that said, I have tried my best to make the firmware easy to build by documenting the build process, documenting all the dependencies, and providing you with multiple ways of building the source code. So please let me know your thoughts on this one down in the comments. Okay, we need to be able to turn the heater on and off and also measure the temperature of the heater so that it doesn't get too hot and melt our filament or the enclosure itself. So to control our heater, we will use a power MOSFET. We want to apply a higher voltage on its gate in order to minimize the on resistance so that MOSFET doesn't heat up too much. But in order to safely interact with ESP32, we will use an additional MOSFET to drive the power MOSFET's gate. There are many different ways to design this circuit, so feel free to optimize if you have a better solution for your application. To measure the heater temperature, we could use a simple thermistor, but ESP has a relatively poor ADC performance. Because of this, we will use a digital temperature sensor. This one is accurate and fast enough for our use case and also very easy to source. Then we want to be able to measure the temperature and humidity inside the dry box and also measure the ambient temperature and humidity. To do this, we will use two temperature and humidity sensors, one inside the dry box and other one on the outside. Since they share an I2C bus, we will have to make sure that they have different I2C addresses so that we can talk to each sensor and also differentiate them. Luckily, most of the modules out there have an address pin or a select resistor. Alternatively, you could select two different sensors, although ideally you want to have two identical ones so that we have same accuracy and precision range. For the fan inside the dry box, we want to be able to control the fan speed. For example, when we are heating the dry box, having the fan at full speed helps speed up that process. 
but once we reach that desired temperature, we can lower the fan speed to reduce noise, or maybe even keep it reduced all the time to reduce noise. Also, when the box is idle or off, we want to be able to turn the fan off completely. We will use a 4-pin or a PWM fan, so in our design we will have ESP32 outputting a PWM signal to control the fan speed. I am using a 5V Noctua PWM fan that allows fan speed control all the way from 100% or full on down to 0% or completely off. There are also a couple of other things like an RGB LED to indicate the current state of the dry box. Then there is also a power section which takes external 12 volts or 24 volts that is used by the heater and regulates it down to 5 volts and 3.3 volts that is used by the fan and ESP respectively. Okay, now thanks to video editing, we have completed the PCB layout, manufactured the PCB, soldered everything and tested the board in 5 seconds. The hardware is ready to go. I have decided to reuse the enclosure and the heater from my old filament dryer. While this is a decent filament dryer for its price, I am not entirely happy with the 24 hour time limit and that it shows heater temperature instead of internal ambient temperature. Also it doesn't come with a fan or temperature and humidity sensor. But most importantly, I don't like that I have to come to the dry box in order to turn it on or off or change temperature or even see in what state it is currently. So for now, I'm going to recycle the plastic box and the heater from it as a starting point. But in the future, I plan on making a much bigger dry box. Let me know if you would like me to make a video about that as well. Now we need to write the code for the ESP32. We are going to program it to control the heater and the fan and also take readings from our sensors. Also, we will program our own web interface that we are going to use to remotely interact with the dry box. As always, the entire source code is available in the GitHub repository if you want to take a look at it. But at a very high level, there are two main things that are happening heater-wise. In our dry box, we want to control or limit two things. One is maximum or the desired temperature inside the box, and other one is maximum allowed heater temperature. Essentially, we are telling the dry box to try and keep the filament at 55 degrees C, but also make sure that the heater doesn't exceed 65 degrees C, otherwise it might damage the filament for example. So first problem, our heater can be either on or off. When it's on, it's fully on and it will obviously try to heat up as fast as possible to its maximum temperature. And when it's off, it's fully off and it will start to cool down towards ambient temperature. Obviously, having the heater fully on or fully off is not ideal when we want to be able to precisely regulate the temperature of our heater or the dry box. To address this problem, common solution is to use pulse width modulation or PWM. Essentially, we will modulate how long the heater is on versus off within each cycle. This allows us to run the heater at, for example, 100% power until it reaches target temperature, and then reduce that to 20% of power. Or technically, 100% power but only 20% of the time, which is almost the same. Then the second problem is, in order to keep the temperature steady, now we need to calculate how long our heater should be on versus off during each period. For this we will implement a very simple PID controller. PID controllers are very useful and a lot of fun, but this video would be too long if we started doing a deep dive into each topic. So in short, with our simple PID controller we will take temperature samples over time and look at three things. First present or the current value, meaning what is the current temperature versus where we would like it to be. Then second, look at the past temperature values to examine trend over time, like is the temperature going up or down or roughly staying the same. And then finally, try to guesstimate the future or what we expect the next value to be. Then we can take all three observations and use them to calculate or decide how much power do we want our heater to draw in order to keep or reach the target temperature. Okay, now we need to create an interface to interact with our dry box. We want to be able to interact with our dry box from anywhere. 
there is really no need for us to have to come to the dry box in order to see what is the temperature or to turn it on or off. We will use an ESP32 to create a web server that will serve a web page through which we can check the status of the dry box and also control it. Like for example, set the desired temperature inside the dry box, set the fan speed and also limit the maximum heater temperature. We will also expose few web APIs that we can use to pull the dry box data and also control it. We can visit or call the slash status page which will give us the current real-time status of the dry box and all the sensors it has available. This can be very useful to integrate our dry box with other systems or for storing long-term data like I'm doing here with Grafana. There are also two additional APIs available. One is turn off, which is self-explanatory, and the other one is turn on, to which we can pass additional parameters that will be used to set the target temperature, maximum heater temperature, and fan speed. With the combination of these APIs, we can do a lot of cool stuff. For example, dynamically control the dry box, like turning it on when we are printing or when humidity is above a certain threshold or automatically turn it off when we are done printing or don't need it. Also, the API makes it super easy to integrate with other systems like Octoprint, NA10, Grafana, and so on. I hope you find this project cool or at least have enjoyed watching the video. If you did, please hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing to my channel, it helps a lot. But in any case, if you have reached this part of the video, thank you, you are awesome. Thank you again for watching, my name is Sasha and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.